Good morning. I would like to welcome you to the regular public meeting of the Henry County Board of Commissioners for 9 a.m. Monday, December 20th, 2010. At this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Before I ask for an acceptance of the agenda, there is one addition and one change. Um, immediately following the acceptance of the agenda, we will have two proclamations. And then item number 11, which is a county manager presentation, we're going to, to move that item up in the agenda to just before the SPLOST um, resolutions. So with those changes being made, I need a motion to accept the agenda. So moved. We have a motion by Mr. Stamey. Second. Second by Mr. Roark. All in favor? The motion carries 5-0. The first, of course, the first item is going to be two proclamations that I'm going to read this morning. And um, as we've come to the last meeting of the year, we have two commissioners who will be leaving us. And uh, we have prepared a proclamation that I'll read for each of them, and then we'll do a presentation. The first one is in appreciation of Monroe Roark, the interim Henry County Commissioner for District 2. Whereas Commissioner Monroe Roark was appointed to the Henry County Board of Commissioners in May 2010 to represent the citizens of District 2 until the end of the year, and whereas during his brief tenure, Commissioner Roark worked diligently alongside his fellow commissioners to ensure that transportation and capital improvement projects stayed on schedule and under budget, and whereas in all matters that came before the board from zoning proposals to budget request, Commissioner Roark weighed each decision carefully to ensure that each resolution was in the best interest of Henry County citizens and that the county would get the best value for each dollar spent. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Henry County Board of Commissioners wishes to express its appreciation to Commissioner Monroe Roark for stepping into a difficult job in serving the citizens of District 2 with integrity and dedication. Be it further proclaimed, the Henry County Board of Commissioners wishes Monroe Roark much success in the future this 20th day of December, 2010. The next proclamation is in appreciation of Johnny Basler, Henry County Commissioner for District 5. Whereas Commissioner Johnny Basler was elected to the Board of Commissioners in 2006 to serve the citizens of District 5 and Henry County as a whole, and whereas during his term in office, Mr. Basler worked diligently alongside his fellow board members to adopt the first ever joint county cities comprehensive land use plan, an innovative plan lauded by planners across the region for its ability to ensure sustainable development that will help to expand our economy and improve citizens' quality of life. And whereas reducing traffic congestion has been also been a priority for Commissioner Basler, who together with his fellow board members adopted the county's first ever joint county cities comprehensive transportation plan and designated funding through the SPLOS 3 program for several critical transportation projects in the area, including the widening of Fairview Road and improvements to several key intersections in District 5. And whereas the safety of citizens and crime reduction were major focuses for Mr. Basler, who pushed for the opening of a Fairview Police Precinct, which has served to increase police visibility in the area, keep police on patrol in the district longer, and with the addition of three police officers per shift, decrease the crime rate in District 5 by 25 percent since Mr. Basler began his term of office. And whereas Commissioner Basler provided his constituents with additional recreation opportunities through the construction of a new recreation center and the purchase of 122 acres of parkland that will offer lakeside walking and biking trails, as well as other passive recreation amenities in the future. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Henry County Board of Commissioners wishes to express its appreciation to Commissioner Johnny Basler for four years of service, vision, and leadership for this community. Be it further proclaimed, the Henry County Board of Commissioners wishes Johnny Basler much success in the future this 20th day of December 2010. Let's give these two gentlemen a hand. And if you two would join us down here, we'd like to present these proclamations.
I don't know if any board members want to share comments or not, but um, I have really enjoyed working with both of you gentlemen, and um, it's not always an easy job, but we've had a lot of fun along the way, a lot of laughter, and um, a lot of stress and a lot of sleepless nights, but I've really enjoyed getting to know both of you and working with you for the citizens of Henry County, and you're truly going to be missed on this board. Mr. Bowman? I'll start it off. Uh, I've known uh, Mr. Roark for a number of years, and uh, actually for a while there he was my Sunday school teacher till I got too old to be in his class and had to uh, move on. Uh, he, uh, he and my kids... Uh, basically grew up together, my oldest daughter. Uh, Commissioner Basler and myself, I met Commissioner Basler in the, uh, when we were running for office at the same time. And uh, when we were both elected, uh, we took on a, a, a task to get as much education as we possibly could. And within 18 months, we had gone all the way through every school that we could actually go to and receive the advanced certification from uh, the Association of County Commissioners. And uh, during that time, the time spent, I found uh, Commissioner Basler to be not only just a friend, but a, but just a, a real genuine person that, uh, you know, he's, he's kind of what you see is what you get. And uh, I've enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, we've not always seen eye to eye on things, even, even on votes here on the board. But, you know, when we've left, we've left, we've left it here and uh, continue to be friends. So I appreciate the last four years. It's uh, gone by awfully fast. It has. The older we get, the faster it goes. Absolutely. So. <clears throat> Absolutely. I'd like to make some comments and to echo some of the things that have already been said. I've been here uh, quite a while, and uh, I must say there's a certain something that exists on this board that hasn't always been here. And do, do I agree with, with everything that Johnny or Monroe do? No, I shouldn't. But I will have to say this, in my many years of, of, of service, I don't know that I have seen or worked with a harder working commissioner than Johnny Basler. Johnny served the citizens of his district well as far as taking care of needs that they had, came in with basically no money in his account as far as his District 5 was concerned, and made the best he could with what he had to do with. I think that speaks volumes, Johnny, of, of what you've done. As far as Monroe, I've known Monroe for many years, back to the time when he was with the paper. Is that not correct, Monroe? So he's been associated, even though he has not held an elected position, and I bet you if you ask him, he'll say that it looks a lot different from that side of the bench to this side of the bench. But many times people that, that are in for a short term or appointed to a position like that are put in a very difficult situation. Uh, I think he's responded well to the, to the citizens of his district, and he, he's, he's done a remarkable job. But the, the main thing is the fact that there's a certain chemistry that's associated with every board. And I'm sure it'll be good with our future board. I'm not saying that. I'm just basing it on what we have today. And there's a chemistry here, and I think Commissioner Bowman uh, said it well. We don't agree on everything, but we leave it here. We don't take it home and we don't uh, retaliate and try to get back at someone. And, and that's the strength of any board or any organization is to, to be able to disagree but not to try to destroy one another. And I think both of you have been exemplary of that effect. Thank you. Johnny, I'd like to echo a lot of those thoughts from the other two commissioners. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you. I knew you before, the, um, before you were elected. Uh, I think I told Mr. Holmes I felt like I was losing a workout buddy as well as a road race buddy, and I never had the privilege of beating him in a road race, even though I ran some with him. But if any of y'all know Johnny, he's high energy. Um, he's by far and nothing to, nothing to take away from anybody on this board. He's probably the hardest working commissioner we have up here and because he takes everything so personal. So it's been a pleasure to work with him. We're going to definitely miss you. Monroe, I know you kind of cheated because you had a lot of exposure 
from the paper side and the news side about us and uh, you come up to speed real real quick it's been a pleasure working with you and I know you won't go away far and when you're sure sometime we're called upon you'll you'll be willing to serve again too so thank you for both of you to for the opportunity serving with both of you I've enjoyed it so how many comments you'd like to make it's been a pleasure I've enjoyed it and I'm not going anywhere <laughs> <laughs> likewise I I think that I was very privileged to be a part of the Board of Commissioners of Henry County. And I'll definitely miss the, uh, my friendship here. Of course, it's not going nowhere. Just because I'm not sitting on this board doesn't mean that I won't be around or be friends with, whether it be the staff or the citizens or the board members. I've quoted this quote hundreds of times. Power at its best is love implementing the demands of justice. And I believe that in my heart. That... When you're in positions, you have to do what's right for everyone. And it should come from the heart and the love you have for each other and humanity. And for me to be able to sit up here with folks who've done a, what kind of job that we've done on this board is just, it's, it's, it's almost, it's hard to believe when you look at some of the counties surrounding us and what we've been through. But I think that uh, Madam Chair has done a tremendous job. I think she's done well at what she's done here. Uh, after after Jason had had resigned or, or left, or, or she won, of course, won the election. But I think she's done well along with the board members. But um, other than that, thank you for having us and, and me being a part of this. And uh, I love you, Henry County. And uh, God bless you and God love you. Thank you. All right, moving on in the agenda, the first item today is going to be a discussion regarding a revocation of an alcohol license. Our presenters, a representative from the Tax Commissioner's Office and a representative from the Police Department, and that's exhibit number one. And I'm assuming that's going to be David Curry and Chief Nichols. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Madam Good morning. Chair, Commissioners. We're here before you this morning and what I want to do is I want to preface uh, what Sergeant Holly Perry is going to explain to you. About two weeks ago our narcotics unit uh, wrapped up an investigation in which they served nine search warrants. During the serving of those nine search warrants one of the locations was Backwoods Bar and Grill. Um, over the years as chief of police and deputy chief of police I have received more complaints against Backwoods Bar and Grill than any other establishment in Henry County. When we served those nine search warrants we ended up making seven arrests. We recovered approximately 300 marijuana plants that were cultivated in indoor groves. We recovered four pounds of packaged marijuana. We also recovered methamphetamine and cocaine and stolen weapon. Now, I just don't believe, uh, as chief of police, that we need to tolerate this type of activity in Henry County. That's why we're here before you this morning there are plenty of businesses that serve alcohol in our county that abide by the rules. Those rules are there for a reason. I haven't expressed to you about the complaints. I've gotten complaints of drug sales inside the bar. I've gotten complaints of gambling inside the bar. And for those five years, we sent undercover agents in, and within a matter of minutes, they were compromised. And I believe they are compromised because this is such a closed location. It's almost like a clubhouse for these individuals. And again, when Sergeant Perry gets an opportunity to present her case, I think she can uh, show that with the evidence that we have in this. Thank you. To reiterate, uh while the task commissioner's office issues alcohol license, we're here before you because you have the responsibility and the authority to revoke or suspend that license. And again, uh, I've got the same evidence Chief Nichols has, but uh, I would like Sergeant Perry the opportunity to come up here 
and explain the uh, evidence. She's done a lot of research, and she can answer any question you may have. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to echo some of the specific concerns that Chief Nichols spoke about. In addition to the enforcement action that took place at Backwoods Bar and Grill on December 8th, the activities of the establishment have been a concern for the citizens of Henry County for numerous years. The specific concerns that have been brought to the attention of the Narcotics Unit and the Police Department has included illegal gambling, drug activity, underage drinking, and after-hours activity, activity to include under-the-bar sales, wet t-shirt contest, bikini contest, and other adult entertainment. Over the years, the Georgia Department of Revenue, as well as the Narcotics Unit, have attempted to address these concerns by sending in undercover agents. As the chief had said, time and time again, the agent would be identified at the door by either patrons of the bar or the bouncers. If the agents were ever able to gain entry into, inside the bar, they would often be pointed out as management as being the new customers, therefore no ac illegal activity would uh, take place. During the five years that Joshua McCullough, the owner of Backwoods Bar and Grill, has owned the bar, uniformed officers have responded to uh, incidents at Backwoods involving fights, public drunkenness, illegal drug use and possession, domestic incidents, noise violations, civil disputes, as well as much uh, DUI enforcement at the location. When the narcotics units began the, their investigation in October um, involving Backwoods Bar and Grill and the associates of Joshua McCullough, since then seven individuals have been arrested to date that are past or current employees of Backwoods Bar and Grill or other businesses operated or associated with Joshua McCullough. These individuals are currently facing charges such as manufacturing marijuana, trafficking marijuana, and other drug possession charges. On December 8th, when the search warrant was executed at Backwoods Bar and Grill, narcotics agents located a quantity of marijuana and cocaine in the office safe. In addition, an Isuzu box truck registered to Joshua McCullough's home address was parked on Backwoods property. A search of the vehicle's contents further connected Joshua McCullough to previous marijuana grow investigations conducted by the police department. The legal activity that pervades Backwoods Bar and Grill is a direct result of the ownership by Joshua McCullough. The management of the establishment has been able to turn a blind eye to the legal activity because Joshua McCullough allowed it and participated in it. It is the concern of the Henry County Police Department that if Backwoods is able to retain an alcohol license, that the owner, management, and patrons will continue to boast a victory over law enforcement, which it has done for numerous years. And the legal activity Joshua McCullough is a part of will continue to exist in Henry County. So with that said, we're here to ask for the immediate suspension of the alcohol license held under Joshua McCullough at Backwoods Barn Group. LaTanya, do you have some comments to make on this? I do, uh, Madam Chairman. Under our ordinance 314-50, um, there are two particular sections, paragraphs 1 and 6, <laughs> that allow the Board of Commissioners in its discretion to do certain things if it deems the person who is the holder of an alcohol license is unfit or not, of not good moral character necessary to hold the license. Now, because it is a license and there are certain rights that go along with that, what the board is authorized to do under 314.55 of the ordinance is to schedule a revocation hearing so that Mr. McCullough can receive notice that the board is considering a possible revocation of the license. You can also immediately, as Mr. Curry has requested, immediately today suspend the license pending the revocation hearing. And finally, it's my understanding um, from the business license supervisor that there is a current application for next year for the license to be renewed for next year. So I will ask that the board also, if you um, deem the facts uh, worthy of this, to deny the existing application pending the final resolution of the revocation hearing. So there will be three things there. Okay, so today, if it is the wishes of the board, the first order of business w would be to suspend the license, then have the revocation hearing set up, yes. and to place a hold on issuing the new license for 2011 until such time as 
the revocation hearing can be held. Yes, ma'am. And I would recommend that the revocation hearing be scheduled for the uh, next Board of Commissioners evening meeting. Um, Mr. McCullough has to receive 10 days written notice, and so he could go ahead. And um, Madam Clerk has said that would be the January 18th. If we schedule that, the notice can go out to Mr. McCullough today that the license has been suspended <coughs> pending the hearing that's scheduled for January 18th. All right, does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? Mr. Roark? First off, is the restaurant, whatever's left of it, is it closed right now? No, sir. It is currently up and operating. Okay. If, uh, says Mr. McCullough's taken into custody, if he's, if he's incarcerated, do when the time for whatever reason during the time of the meeting if we if we schedule the meeting for January 18th for the hearing would he would would he appear how, how does that work I'm not sure if he's bonded out or if he can hire a representative to be here on his behalf and certainly um, as this board has always done um, you can take under advisement any request for continuances if such is made okay any other questions? Mr. Holden? Oh, I'm sorry. It's the, the meeting um, is the 19th instead of the 18th. That would be the, oh, when is it? It is the 18th. Okay, Tuesday the 18th. <coughs> now the clerk is telling me. Do you have any idea when his uh, trial will be? Because at this point he's innocent until no. proven guilty. That's right. These are charges and allegations, and right. what you are being asked to do is an administrative act. This is not a criminal proceeding, but this is an administrative act. So I'm not sure when the actual criminal trial will be held. And, of course, there is that presumption of innocence on the, with respect to the criminal charges. Exactly. The administrative charges has a different standard, and this board can move forward in spite of the fact that the criminal charges are not yet resolved. Any other questions or comments? Madam Chair, I have a question. Ms. Tanya, on the uh, second page when it's talking to referring to the beverage li alcohol beverage license under B, under section 3-14-55, uh, says in the suspension five days to 30 days. How does that apply to what we're doing today? Mm -hmm. Yours, you will be proceeding under paragraph C and not B. That's a difference. That's for a person who's already found guilty. This is paragraph C that uh, requires a hearing before the Board of Commissioners. Under 31450, there are 14 eligibility standards that a person um, has, to, can, has to satisfy in order to be eligible to receive a license. Some, some of those 14 items don't require a board approval. For example, if a, an establishment sells to an underage minor and is convicted, well, the business license supervisor can immediately suspend that license with, without board approval. The, Two items, paragraphs one and six, that deal with moral character and a person being fit to hold the license, those two eligibility requirements require a determination by the Board of Commissioners for that finding. So that is why uh, Mr. Curry has come to you today to ask you all to make that determination. Now, what you will be doing today is not making a final determination, but making a determination as to whether or not the facts that have been presented are sufficient enough that you want to proceed with having a revocation hearing. And it may be that at the time of the revocation hearing, you may decide that there is not sufficient basis to revoke the license, or you may find that there is. Okay, and if, if this was to pass, it would go into effect today? The suspension would go into effect today. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All right, you have, um, we, don't, we do not have a resolution, but we do have a request uh, from the police department and the tax commissioner's office for a temporary suspension pending a revocation hearing on January the 19th. And um, I will 18th, entertain. 18th, Madam Chair, and we're sorry. I'm it's sorry. The 18th. It is the 18th. We we're back to Tuesday the 18th. <laughs> yes, the revocation hearing on Tuesday the 18th. And um, with that being said, I will look to a board member for a motion. I have a motion to approve by Mr. Bowman, a second by Mr. Roark. All in favor? The motion carries 5-0. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is a resolution appointing the county legislative coordinator with ACCG, and that's going to be exhibit number two in your book. 
This is a request, um, I'll just mention to you, this is a request that came through the ACCG to me um, a few weeks ago, and basically what they're asking for is a resolution that will nominate someone um, on Henry County staff to be at sort of a liaison between ACCG and the county commissioners during the legislative session. So if anything comes up that we need to be made aware of that the General Assembly is going to pass that may affect local government, that may require some phone calls or resolutions on our part, this person would bring that information to us and make sure that we followed up in any way that we needed to follow up. Um, so it's just, it's just a way of making sure that the county's interest, the counties of Georgia's interests are represented um, during the General Assembly this year. And as you all well know, sometimes they pass things that um, affect local government and our budgets. And so with ACCG down there monitoring that, that information could get back to us quickly. In speaking with the county manager, I asked who he felt like would be the best person on our staff to serve in that position, and he has asked that he be um, the person nominated to fill that position so that he can report back to us. So that is the resolution before you designating Butch Sanders as that liaison. And if there are any questions um, or comments on that, we'll entertain those at this time. Okay, Mr. Bowman. I'm curious as to uh, if Butch, where's Butch? Yes, sir. Butch, I, I, I know your plate's full. So I, I, I don't know how you're going to add something else to it. But I, I just knew a lot of items on that plate are impacted by the legislature. Uh, I've been on the phone uh, quite a bit in the last couple months with uh, representatives of the governor's office, lieutenant governor's office, have a good relationship with uh, uh, two new members of the legis of the delegation. Um, the uh, incoming governor was a congressman in, in a district that I worked in, and uh, uh, we have a very good relationship. So I thought uh, a lot of things kind of came together in this uh, um, this request from ACCG. How much time would this require you being away from here? Uh, initially, uh, their meetings don't usually start until real decisions begin to be made. So uh, uh, initially, everything will be done electronically over the phone. Uh, will not take uh, a lot of time out of the office. And you, and you don't feel like this would uh, uh, inhibit your ability to take care of everything else that you have to take care of, which is a no, monumental sir, it, task. It, if it does, if it does uh, um, impact there, I, I will come back to you and ask for, uh, for some help or uh, uh, another designee. That's all I have. Anyone else? We have a motion to approve by Mr. Holder and a second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? The motion carries 5 0. Thank you. The next item is going to be under SPLOST, and that, oh, I'm sorry, the next item is a county manager presentation. That was originally item number 11 on your agenda, a request for approval of an agreement with Georgia Tax and Regulatory Solutions and adoption of an ordinance setting forth new guidelines for registering telecommun telecommunications towers, antennas, and billboards. And uh, the county manager will present that, and it's exhibit number 20. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And good morning. I appreciate the opportunity to move this forward on the agenda as uh, uh, the principals from GTRS have uh, uh, another appointment in upcoming appointment in Fulton County. Uh, as you well know, <clears throat> county governments uh, led by the Board of Commissioners have a lot of responsibilities to attend to. One of the most important that we do is putting together a tax digest. Our major source of income depends on an accurate, fair, on-time digest. And there are a lot of different classes of property that need to be identified, reviewed, and valued in such a digest. It's come to the attention of numerous governments uh, over the course of the last few years that given technological changes and given uh, the addition of several what, what are called specialized properties to uh, the, the digest and to county uh, uh, privately owned properties, uh, we're, we're falling behind in identifying, registering, and monitoring 
things such as cell towers, antennas, and billboards. Um, I guess it was probably a couple months ago now that we had a uh, three and three meeting with the board uh, where uh, Mr. Dillard and Mr. Gilly had a chance to come and present on behalf of uh, their company, GTRS, their services, where they come in and they identify and register uh, these specialized properties that are now throughout Henry County. We have had the opportunity, working hand-in-hand -hand with our Board of Assessors, um, to assess our interest and our need for such a service, and we feel like it's great. As a matter of fact, the Board of Assessors, and uh, working with their staff, uh, actually contracted with GTRS earlier this year to do a snapshot or a current uh, picture of uh, a section of the county as far as what we do not have identified in, in the area of specialized properties. And, uh, uh, and the, filing, the, the findings were, uh, were kind of eye-opening. Uh, we knew that uh, uh, we estimated how many towers we had, how many billboards we have in, the, in that specific area, but GTRS came up with much greater numbers. And these are uh, 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 items that when you put together, a, uh, a digest need to be accounted for. And basically the contract and the ordinance that you have in front of you is a follow-up from that informational session from the earlier uh, uh, snapshot investigation commissioned by the Board of Assessors in the, uh, uh, in the communication discussion that we had regarding the contract. Um, and basically what uh, uh, this would do is, uh, this agreement would do, would bring GTRS in as a partner to identify and register, and register is the key word here, the specialized properties in Henry County. Uh, and the ordinance, the attached ordinance, which was drafted by, by uh, Ms. Wiley, basically gives the guidelines for the owners of such property for uh, uh, meeting their legal obligations. Uh, I would like to say that uh, um, we've gotten very positive references from uh, uh, Liberty County, where GTRS has worked before. Uh, I cannot give you a, a, an exact value of what I think the uh, uh, properties that uh, we'll uh, uncover to add to the digest, but uh, I can tell you that uh, it, it will probably be in the tens of millions of dollars. And the good thing is it's not only what we find initially, uh, they are monitored and all improvements co-locates on antennas will be added over, the, over time and we won't miss anything uh, as time goes on. Um, so I, I can tell you, I know that there probably are a lot of uh, interested property owners out there. I can pledge to you that we will work with them. Uh, it's going to be an education process. Uh, we'll talk to them about the ordinance. We'll talk to them about the process and uh, uh, our uh, uh, citizens will understand uh, how we're trying to come up with a, with a fair, comprehensive digest that includes all our properties. Uh, and uh, Mr. Dillard and Gilly are here to answer any uh, specific questions, and, uh, uh, and we will uh, uh, certainly be glad to do that. Does anyone on the board have a question pertaining to this item? <coughs> Mr. Holder? Butch, I know you said that the value would be in the tens of millions of dollars. Uh, the fees for doing that will be what? Uh, the fees are listed on page nine of the agreement. I'm looking at it. And uh, uh, basically, it, they depend, the fees um, are on a uh, sliding scale depending on the numbers that are, that are uh, uncovered for the digest. It, okay. It's much like uh, when we enter into a contract uh, with a uh, 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 revenue recovery firm, uh, whether it's for ambulance fees or whether it's for unpaid taxes, it's usually based on a percentage. This is uh, 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 very much like that with the, uh, with the stated fees, as I said, on page 9. I can't give you, I can't tell you an exact number. Oh, I understand that. I'm, I'm looking at that. I'm, I've, that's the reason for my question. Yes, sir. Okay, if the fees based on what I'm seeing here can't exceed 80% of the license fee, what is the license fee once those, those uh, properties are uncovered and, and, and uh, listed? Well, those license fees are yet to be determined. 
they'll have to be, uh, um, they'll have to be, are they, do we have an exact a number there? Well, the license fee is the registration fee, basically. The um, owner of the cell tower and or billboard will pay a fee to register, a license fee to register every year. And that will serve <laughs> a number of purposes for county usage, um, such as um, information such, such that the uh, property can be properly identified, accounted for, and ultimately we hope to be valued um, at its far, fair market value. But the problem is that not knowing where those properties are and not being able to identify the special properties located on those um, uh, antennas and on billboards has made it very difficult for that. So the fee will be an annual fee that's stated here, um, $1,000 and or, and you see what's here for billboards. And that money, 80% of that will go to the um, entity that is managing this licensing program for the county, which will be GTRS. And that's annual. They'll get 80% each year of, of, of all of the, the licensing fees, too. That's correct. Um, the, the licensing fee is the registration fee. Okay. Okay. Next question I would have would be this one. If we'll say it's $1,000 per location per cell type. And there may be 10 co-locates on one type. We don't know that. I mean, you know, and there's, they're, 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 they're multiple. Let's put it that way. What is it going to do, and have we thought through it far enough to know what it's going to do to the end user, such as the cell phone user, whether it be the advertiser that's advertising on the billboard, <coughs> Those fees are going to have to come back to that owner for him to pass along to, to the end user. Has to be. Have we looked at it from that perspective? Mr. Holder, I don't think we can, we can ascertain um, what's going to happen there. Um, there is a, there's a cost of doing business to in, involved in any business. What, what we are trying to put forth is just a a process um, that accurately reflects the the value of the property in Henry County, and uh, um, and there are um, you know the, the the fact that we may not have been doing that as as accurately or as as um, uh, fully as we could be um, really is it, that's that's what we're trying to address here. Um, I, I I can't tell you. Um, exact, but I, I, I'm, I'm certain so this, that that will, be a, that will be a, uh, a, a result. It's unknown at this time because if it's something we haven't been doing, we don't know how much we're losing. I understand that. That's uh, correct. But my question, again, was the fact of what it's going to do to the end user, the consumer, the taxpayer that has to pay these fees because, as you said, there's a cost of doing business, and if the cost that goes up to the business, then the, the consumer is going to have to pay a portion of it. So that's, that's the reason for my question, have we looked into it? And I know there's no answer as to what the real impact is, but have we thought about it in that respect? But, but I would also say that uh, um, a digest needs to be fair to every property owner, whether you're a homeowner or a business owner. And by recovering these missed values or uh, uh, values that we haven't had on the digest right now should take a lot of pressure off the uh, uh, the residential part of the digest. I would think there would be a, a benefit there uh, by increasing the, the commercial, the fair commercial load of the digest. I'm, I'm not arguing that. I'm just, I'm, I'm just again saying what it's going to do to him as far as his actual fees. He may save dollars in taxes because of the commercial being hit, but he may also hit be hit on a monthly fee whether it be as a cell phone user or whether it be an advertiser on that billboard. That, that's, that's the reason for my question. And, and, and there's and one so of many the, unknowns at this time, you, you don't know. And one of the values in my mind from using uh, GTRS and the database that they've developed and the information that they've developed is we can look a property owner, uh, a billboard cell tower uh, owner in the eye and say, this is a fair number. 
they have uh, uh, they've developed those numbers they know what the values are and uh, um, that gives me some comfort in you know coming to the table to um, communicate educate and work with uh, uh, the owners of these properties Mr. Stamey. Which when we first reviewed this, I had a meeting with Mr. Deller. I know that you're here this morning, but wasn't that fee as high as 90 percent originally? We sat down with the, uh, uh, the principals of GTRS, and we negotiated the, uh, the contract, um, I, I, I'd say, uh, uh, to, a, to a fair number where I, that I think was in uh, the best interest of the county. But so several of high. those numbers have changed. Yeah, yes. I thought it was a lot higher than this. And just to echo some thoughts that Commissioner Holder said also about the, about the fee, I look at like I look at it a lot like the uh, the impact fee that was put on to the residential the construction industry in our county. That fee was put on there, paid by the builder, which eventually passed on to the consumer when he bought the house. So, uh, and that's when the impact. It I, I really believe that this fee is going to go all the way through to the end user, which would be the guy that's advertising. We're all using cell phones anyway. It's just another fee that will probably go up on us. But the guy who's using the local billboard company to advertise, if he's paying 150. It's obviously he's going to get a, a, an increase, which will eventually pass on to him, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Robart. Uh, you may have covered this. I may have missed it. But in your summary, you say uh, to identify, register, and set up monitoring for property. Obviously, initially, it is to our benefit to have a firm like GTRS and their expertise. But will there, not, will there come a point after the initial setup where the county can do this internally, or will we need them uh, on, on an ongoing basis? Will, will this be residual? fees in perpetuity till the billboard crashes the ground. Well, that is one of the reasons why we, I felt like it was important to work closely with the board. Mr. Smeichel um, took this on as an, as an important issue. And, uh, uh, and, and we looked at the potential for doing it in-house, all in-house uh, initially. But uh, there was just, mm -hmm. we, we didn't have the database, we didn't have the staff, mm -hmm. we didn't have the expertise there. <laughs> so as time goes on and we develop such internal expertise, I think uh, uh, the operation of, of the program can be adjusted. Sure. Mr. Bassler? Out of the ARC counties, how many other counties are doing this? Uh, I, currently, I know uh, uh, Liberty County does it. I know there are numerous counties that are, as far as a GTRS agreement, Out of the uh, I talked to ACCG. Uh, they are uh, I, I guess the best way to put it is they're counseling uh, their their counties and uh, uh, speaking to their board. Uh, it is, uh, as I said, it's only been probably in the last few year few years that we've realized what we're missing and what we need to be uh, how we need to be addressing uh, our digest needs. Some things I'll be honest with you. I understand that we're probably missing some tax revenues off the billboards and probably sell tires as well. Um, but I'm not so sure that that I'm I'm comfortable 100% with this. Uh, the 80% scares me a little bit. I'm gonna just be honest with you. I know they're doing most of the legwork. I could I could probably see, you know, and, and that's something that I apologize probably just slipped by me. But the 80% kind of worries me a little bit. Now, uh, you know, I know that we shouldn't probably get the lion's share of it because they're doing most of the legwork. But at the end of the day, it's coming back to the Henry County taxpayers, and then. Other than that, it's, it's, it's a lot of the Henry County taxpayers go out to pay for it, whether it's coming out of uh, just a, 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 an average citizen or someone who is renting a billboard, more or less. So that I've, I've got some issues. I've got some concerns with it that I don't know that, that we've worked out totally. That's As a point of clarification, we're, not, I don't, we're talking about 80% of their registration fee, not 80% of the taxes they will be paying Correct. on that. So if it's a thousand dollar registration fee, then their fee would be eight hundred of that. We would keep right. two, but the full amount of the property taxes would be collected by Henry County. That, that, that's correct. And uh, uh, and as I told Mr. Holder, Holder earlier, I can't tell you the the number on that registration fee. I I, I just we don't know what the numbers are going to be. But the eighty percent registration fee is an annual fee. You say. Correct. Mr. Rowart. Um. I know I don't know if all the numbers of how many of them are determined, but I know one of the premises on which we brought this issue up was that the idea that there are probably billboard owners out there who are bringing in 
a good amount of revenue and then a small business owner may be bringing in the same or less, but that small business owner is paying business license fees and stuff that this billboard owner does not have to pay. And so this is kind of, so a business owner who's in some cases probably wants the playing field leveled this way. Am I, am I going up too I, far I, on a limb to say that? Is I that think, not the way, I that's think, the way I understood some of the reasoning behind this? I, I, I think that's, that's a larger diff definition of equity would, mm -hmm. would cover your point. There's no doubt. Um, and, and I can just say that uh, as far as an annual fee, we're talking about companies that make a lot of changes and a lot of additions to their equipment, uh, changes and additions that we have not known about and missed in the past. Um, we will not, that won't take place in, in, in the future uh, with, the, with the monitoring that needs to be set up. So um, the, the, yes, the, the fee will be there, but so will the increased revenues from any, any changes and improvements to the, to the facilities. Part of the discussion, what came out in this discussion with the assessor's office, even though we're not dealing with taxes in this particular agreement, but it's certainly something the county will use to garner information um, to give to the assessor's office. But part of the issue was if you have a business owner, a corporation here in Henry County that has personal property equipment located within its facilities, that property is identified in a return every year that's provided so that the fair market value of that property can properly be assessed. We're not getting that information from billboard owners and or cell tower providers. So they're not providing the same information that other entities are providing. And so to go to Commissioner Rourke's issue, it does become an issue of equity and, and what's fair for um, all citizens who do business in this county and who have property in this county that's subject to being taxed and assessed. So basically, and I because I, I want to make sure everybody's clear, the registration that these companies will be required to do each year will require them to spell out specifically each and every location they have within the county so that at that point our assessors know where these facilities are located and can go out and assess a fair tax value to each one. We're currently and I'll use this as an example. If AT&T has something located on top of a building, we may not know it's located on top of the building, and they're not being taxed on that. Correct. And, and it could be millions of dollars worth of equipment that's changed over. Not only do we not know what's there, when it's changed, when it's changed and upgraded to uh, some new form of technology that we're not aware of, that is not being reported. And so it's the underreporting or the lack of reporting that necessitates the need for this registration system. And it's no different, really, from having to register every year to have an alcohol license. It's just a registration fee. But they're, the not reg the they're not registering every location. They're registering <laughs> one time, and they're listing all the locations? They're listing all their locations, and, and, and Doug can correct me if I'm wrong. They're listing all the locations, and they're also... And, and they're certifying this under oath by an officer of that organization so that it's being verified under oath. Doug, if you, could you come up here to the microphone? Thank you, Madam Chairperson. I'm Doug Dillard, Dillard Galloway with GTRS. I think it's important, it's important to know that this is, this is a licensing registration program to help the county identify these properties. Our experience thus far has been that most jurisdictions are way, way, way low uh, on what they think is in the county because these properties are not permitted. When antennas are added to towers, they're not permitted. When a, when a billboard goes from a static billboard to a tri-vision, it's not, it's, not it's not permitted in any way. When they put rooftop antennas, they, you don't know about it. So what, what this program puts in place is an opportunity of identifying where the property is, who the owners are, and who the users are. Our experience has been that on cell towers, you're looking at probably at two and a half carriers, two, two and a half antennas per tower. Okay, um, The program that we're suggesting is a $1,000 annual fee of which we get 80%. But GTRS will absolutely do all the work. They'll send the bills out. The county collects the money. 
GTRS is not paid until after you get paid. So it is a revenue neutral issue for you. Uh, and then you find out where they are, how many antennas, what type of billboard, et cetera. Then there's an annual inspection to also determine whether or not there's any code violations, whether or not they've gotten the permits like they should have, whether or not they're fenced, whether or not they're, the foundations are correct. So all of this investigation uh, would then be turned over to the appropriate department, be it, uh, be it uh, plan and zoning, be it, be it development, whoever it might be as far as code enforcement is concerned. So it's, it's not just about valuation. And this contract does not have anything to do with valuation. It has, it has everything to do with registration, location, inspection, and modification of all of these locations. Uh, one year, uh, Butch mentioned Liberty County. When we first went to Liberty County, they said they knew where they, the cell towers were. They had 14. We found over 38 towers, and they had 100, over 100 uh, antennas. So, so they they have, and that that they started out with just the cell tower program. They are now going to the, to also employ us to do the billboard. So, this is an identification location. It's a registration process. I think it's, it's best time a registration and licensing program, so that you understand what's out there, whether or not it's in compliance with your code requirements, whether or not they have obtained them correctly, and whether or not they're being maintained correctly. I mean, we are, we found in, in another jurisdiction where. Uh, the fence was, was uh, in disrepair. The, the tower was in close proximity to a playground. You know, it was an attractive nuisance. Kids were out there climbing all over it. So uh, it, it, it goes beyond just, uh, just the information for, for, to give to the Board of Tax Assessors. The way I look at it, it is, it is the foundation that's necessary. It's a comprehensive foundation for us to take the ball and, and run with it. Uh, and I think it's... Uh, Necessary for us to put uh, put together a uh, um, a digest that we can all have confidence and know that it's uh, fair and and full. And, and relative to our continued participation, it's a it's a proposed three year contract, um, which we're we're suggesting we do it. But at the appropriate time, I think uh, it would be uh, in, important for the county to look at uh, having trained staff that, that are trained to to be able to do this also. But we would, we would be the ones that would assist the county in that program as well during the three-year period. Any other questions? Mr. Rowark? I think that as rapidly as technology is changing, what Mr. Dillard just said, I think it's in the county's best interest for our police and fire and 911, for instance, to know exactly how many telecommunications towers there are because there's only so much bandwidth out there. And our 911, we're constantly having to update and, and all that kind of thing. And, and as he said, with you know, make sure the things are built correctly, the billboard towers or whatever. Um, I think from a safety and security standpoint, at least getting that phase of the process done, regardless of the tax implications down the road, I think would be, uh, I think would be advantageous for us. So, Bob, Madam Chair, if I understand this, it would just be an annual fee, just like any other business. And there's not now. Just like our little old biscuit shop down there. Every year we have to buy a business license. That's right. And for that, we would go expect it to tell you what's on the property. You'll co we'll geocode it. You'll give it a landlot and district number. or give a parcel number. None of that you have today. You don't know where these things are. You don't know how many are out there, even and though you, you some could, of them have been identified. And you could get up to 80% of the fee. After it's collected. We give you the information. They return. They return it. We we in, we investigate it. You get paid. And you pay us, and then we go we go finish the finish the inspection. Because we don't know where they are either. I mean, until until they actually make make those uh, registration returns. Now we will survey the entire county to determine whether or not they're all being they're all being returned. But but they under under. Uh, like any other application, it's got to be truthful. So I mean, there's a there's a false swearing provision on the face of the uh, on the face of the uh, uh, registration form. And what what's happening now is that is that what is getting returned is getting returned at whatever amount they want to assess it at. 
it's not and they're not charged anything and 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 as they return them they they depreciate them because they're personal property they depreciate them every year any other questions uh, Latanya is this an ordinance amendment actually we are we will be establishing a new ordinance so we'll have to figure out where it will best go I would say somewhere in our public works section of our ordinance <coughs> but I'll work with the county clerk to find a, an appropriate place so the proposed the ordinance that's attached to the agreement is what's proposed and it is an entirely new ordinance um, that will be added to the code and does it require public comment no ma'am okay um, the other issue uh, item that I had a question about is on page three of the agreement for professional services we still have a blank space for the umbrella coverage the umbrella coverage limit of insurance do when do we fill that blank in with that amount That's not whatever we will have it before we execute the contract okay. whatever your car wherever your coverage requirements are we'll meet okay and we also have a, a misspelled word on that page which i will right. I won't give to y'all. You think that's funny, but I mean these are permanent records, so we want them to be. We want them to be. <laughs> we want them to be right. So, if if there are um, if there are no additional questions or comments, you have before you an agreement <clears throat> for professional services, and I'll entertain a motion. Well, we have two choices: to either approve it or disprove it. with the proposed ordinance attached Do we have a motion by mr. Roark to approve is there a second we, we have a second by mr. Basler is there any further discussion on this item if not all in favor all opposed all right motion passes with Roark Basler and Mathis in favor Stamey and Holder opposed and Commissioner um, Bowman has recused himself due to a, um, a business contract he currently has with AT&T. Thank you.